<laughs> oh, hey! Welcome to Story Lab. Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about joy while we take a look at the best way to love others well. <laughs> Hey, I'm Zeke. And that's Carter. And we're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. Uh, Carter. Carter. Car what? Oh! Hey, I'm Carter. I already said that. And we're talking about... Yep, already did that. Sorry, I just got a little carried away. You wanna let us in on your tunes? Sure thing. What is this? Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Oh, I didn't know classical music was your jam. Yeah, well, this piece uses live cannons. Wait, what? Hold the bus. Live cannons? The composer Tchaikovsky wrote this piece of music to celebrate a victory in battle. The orchestra actually used cannon blasts as part of the music, and churches rang their bells, too. That's insane! I gotta hear it again. Ah, oh. so do orchestras still use actual cannons when they play this piece? Sometimes if it's outside, but a lot of the time they just pop a balloon or use a pre-programmed electronic drum pad. <laughs> Yikes, I guess that's one way to celebrate. I've got a better way we can celebrate. Mm, I'm in. How do you feel about confetti? Oh, positive. Well, that was positively underwhelming. You can't just toss confetti, you have to launch it. Ah, I see where this is going. Let's make it! You only need a few basic supplies to make a confetti launcher. AKA confetti cannon. We've got a plastic syringe, tubing, construction paper, tape, and lots of confetti. Step one. Cut a square piece of construction paper and cut a curve on one end. Then roll it into a funnel shape so the narrow end can just fit over the plastic tubing. Tape the funnel securely. Thank you. Step two, put the funnel over the end of the plastic tubing and tape it in place. You want to make sure that the seal is airtight. Okay, Ooh, ready for confetti? Oh, hey, that rhymes. Ready for confetti with a Yeti who likes spaghetti? Uh, with... Yes, ready. All right. <laughs> okay. Confetti at the ready. Then cue the music. Here goes! <laughs> that was great! That was amazing! Let's see it again! When the plunger is pressed, it compresses air inside the syringe. The compressed air is forced out of the syringe and through the plastic tubing, releasing the confetti! This is way cool! Can we share this with someone else? Speaking of sharing, it's time for... The Story Before the Story! Today we're in the Book of Romans, the sixth book of the New Testament. Romans is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the believers in, you guessed it, Rome. Paul had never met these Jesus followers, but he prayed for them often and hoped to visit soon. In this letter, written while Paul was in Corinth, he encourages the believers. He clearly lays out God's grace in sending Jesus to set us free. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we can show God's love to others. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. 
The Apostle Paul traveled all over, sharing the good news about Jesus. Now, Paul covered a lot of ground, but still, he couldn't be everywhere all at once. So, when Paul started hearing about the believers in Rome, he sat down and wrote them an epic letter. I, Paul, am writing this letter. I serve Christ Jesus. I've been appointed to be an apostle. God set me apart to tell others his good news. Paul went on to detail how those who follow Jesus are set free from sin, from the wrong things they've done. And because of that, their lives can begin to look different. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. And as we follow Jesus, God begins to change the way we think. And it starts to play out in how we treat the people around us. Love one another deeply. Honor others more than yourselves. Then Paul got down to the nitty gritty, what loving others can really look like. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. Short and simple, right? But let's take a closer look. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. There's a big word that relates to both of these things. Empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy means that you are aware of how someone else is feeling. And you can imagine what it might be like to be in their position. Another way to say this is putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Okay, that doesn't mean actually putting on someone else's shoes, but you can use your imagination to think about how you would feel if what happened to them happened to you. It can help you be a really good friend. When Paul told us to be joyful with those who are joyful and sad with those who are sad, he simply meant we can love others well by showing empathy. But that's not always easy. I mean, maybe your friend is really excited about their math grade, even though it doesn't seem like a big deal to you. You can think about how hard your friend worked to get that grade and share the excitement with them. You totally rocked that test! Sometimes it means celebrating someone even if they got something you didn't. It might be that your big brother got picked for the traveling team and you didn't. I mean, ugh, that is hard, right? Of course you're disappointed. But instead of dragging your brother down, you can still congratulate your brother and choose to be happy for him, even while you're still sad for yourself. Way to go. You totally deserve this. Now, let's look at the flip side. Be sad with those who are sad. Now, honestly, when a friend is sad or upset, it can feel uncomfortable. I mean, you just want them to be happy again. But sometimes the very best thing you can do is just be with them and let them know that you see how they feel. I'm really sorry this happened to you. I'd be sad too. In fact, sometimes people need somebody to be sad with them for a while so that they're able to be happy again later. Having empathy is not always easy, but it is a skill that you can learn. Start by paying attention to your friends' faces. If they're looking up or looking down, if they seem nervous or excited or bummed out, Reading and watching stories about people who are different from you is also a great way to practice putting yourself in somebody else's place. The more you learn to put yourself in someone else's shoes, the more you'll be able to show God's love to others as Paul encouraged the Romans, be joyful with those who are joyful, be sad with those who are sad. The end. Paul left us with some pretty big shoes to fill. Shoes, huh? I see what you did there. I just love that we get to use our imaginations to put ourselves in someone else's place. Yeah, creativity, empathy, and joy, all in one. So what's our part in the story? Our job is super simple. Practice empathy. Practice celebrating when someone you know is happy. And practice listening and being present when they're sad. If your friend makes it to the top of the rock climbing wall or decorates their first cake, cheer them on. Make a big deal of it. But if they just scrape their knee or found out they have to move away, you shouldn't be there with them just to be sad with them. Sometimes just being present with someone is the best thing you can do. That's absolutely right. Choosing to be with somebody in their sadness might even help them to be able to find joy even if it's not right away. If empathy doesn't feel easy, ask God for help. Because empathy is God's idea. Exactly. 
And when we follow Jesus, we can learn to see and respond to others like Jesus. See you next time. So, here's the thing. You can help others find joy. And confetti is a great way to start. So, I supersized the cannon. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, shit, I'm looking. It's everywhere. I feel the joy, in, bro. In. <laughs> Whoa, there it goes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Look at it. Oh. Now, maybe we should empathize with whoever has to clean this up. <laughs> You mean like us? Oh, right. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. I got the floor. Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom right quick. Uh, right oh, back. oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Leaving this for me to do? What'd you say? <laughs>